This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about how to retire and how to make your money work for you. This video is actually the result of a really good question from someone who's probably my most persistent YouTube commenter. This is Destructor EFX. He asks the question, he or she asks the question, uh, how can you reach a point where you are no longer selling your time, but your money is working for you. Now, Destructor EFX has been asking me this question for months and months and months, and I appreciate his or her persistence, and I'm happy to finally be able to make this video. I looked this up, and it turns out Destructor EFX actually has his or, or her own uh, YouTube channel. It looks like uh, I know enough Italian that I can read a little bit of Portuguese here. I teach magic, origami, uh, experiments, computer tutorials, and useful things and and uh, unuseful uh, unuseful things. So make sure you go start to check out Destructor EFX's YouTube channel. It looks like they have a good video here, actually, how to make a 3D printed Bitcoin, which is pretty uh, pretty cool. So to to answer this question, we're going to have to rewind and sort of build from the basics. There are different stages in the evolution of wealth, and the most basic stage, and the stage where really everyone starts off unless you're like you're like a trust fund kid or something like that is you start off selling your time for money it's very simple you work you get paid this is what it means to have a job and then it, you don't get paid again unless you do more more work if you get sick if you get disabled and you can't work you might be out of luck unless you can get some sort of disability or unemployment benefits now the problem with stage one selling your time for money in other words having a job is that the only way to really increase your wealth is to increase your salary or your hourly wage. So you might start off when you're in college getting paid something like $12 an hour, uh, and then you get a little more education or you get some more skills, you move up to $120 an hour, then maybe $1,200 an hour. This is what a lot of lawyers bill these days. So that's one way to get on the path to wealth. And the way you increase your hourly wage it's, it can be through learning more skills. It can be through getting a shiny new degree like an MA or an MBA. So this is the basic path. And the more, the more scarce your skills are and the, the more valuable your, skill, your skills are. So pretty much anyone can wait on a table or clean bathrooms. These are sort of commodity-like jobs. I, I'm not disparaging them at all, but they pay low uh, hourly wages for a reason because almost anyone can do them. But not everyone can perform open heart surgery or prepare a legal document, etc. This is why doctors, surgeons, lawyers get paid more than waiters and janitors. So this is the, the basic path, the hourly path. The problem with stage one is that your time is finite. And when you have a job, you're exchanging your time for money, and you're actually giving up your most precious commodity. One way to measure this is the infamous death clock online. This is a little bit morbid, but I think it can be useful for sharpening your priorities and realizing no matter what age you are, how, how little time you really have left. So I put some, this is not my actual birthday. Uh, I just put some data in here to click on it, check your death clock, and you can do this for yourself. And you can find out that, for example, if you're this person, you're going to die approximately September 21st, 2049, and you only have so many seconds left. So this, this adds urgency to the whole process. And it also is a good incentive for getting yourself out of stage one. Another problem with stage one is you can be making a lot of money. You can be selling your time for a huge amount of money. You could be selling your time, your 365 days of the year for $5 million per year after taxes. A lot of people on Wall Street, hedge funds make this kind of money, but a lot of them also end up spending most of it. So if you're making $5 million after taxes and you're spending $4.99 million, your net savings is $10,000. There may be people making $50,000 a year who are actually saving more than you are. So if you're not saving money and investing money, you're never going to be able to retire, even if your salary is uh, salary and bonus is something like $5 million per year. Other problems with being a wage slave, uh, stage one, and I don't mean that in a, in a disparaging way, uh, but this is some, somehow how it's, prefer, it's referred to, selling your time for money, being a wage slave. Other problems with this level, you might get sick of having a boss. These are very obvious things, obviously. You, you might have annoying coworkers. 
You might want to actually spend time with your good friends and family rather than just random people you have to work with. You might have to work on weekends. You might have a long commute, etc. So these are the other problems. You're not really in control of your time and you're not really in control of your life. Another problem is that no one or most people never actually get rich this way. It doesn't matter how high your salary is or how high your uh, your wages are, your hourly rate. When you look at the billionaires in the world, all of them, almost without exception, started companies, own equity. Someone like Warren Buffett started by owning lots of stocks and then had his own his own holding company. Obviously, Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos started their own their own companies. And I'm not sure exactly what they paid themselves, whether they paid themselves zero, uh, like Elon Musk has done in certain years. But even if they paid themselves a million dollars a year to be CEO and founder, this is not how they made their money. They made their money through their equity holdings rather than through some sort of W-2 form or salary. So that's, that's the stage. That's stage one. Stage one is basically trading your time for money. Now, stage two is where <clears throat> things begin to get interesting. At this stage, you get tired of spending all the money that's coming in and maybe then some and running up credit card bills. You, you decide that you're finally going to spend less than you earn and you're going to use the difference to begin to acquire assets. These assets could be uh, buying a house, so you stop renting. It could be buying a rental property if you already own a house that you're living in. It could be renting out part of your house. Uh, you could be purchasing dividend stocks, bonds, growth stocks, Bitcoin. These are all assets that either kick off cash, that generate cash, or have a tendency to appreciate over periods of time. So let's say you have a salary and you're able to also purchase a rental property or maybe you're renting out a room in your primary residence. You now have two sources of income. So you're really way ahead everyone else who's still stuck in stage one at this point. So then at this point, what you can do is try to just live off your salary and then use the cash flow from your rental property to save up for a new rental property. This could be dividend stocks. This could be anything like that. We're using the example of a rental property because they tend to have higher yields these days than dividend stocks or bonds. So you live off your salary, you use the cash flow from your rental property to buy another rental property or maybe to fund the mortgage on another rental property by showing you have this sort of uh, income that can support a mortgage. And then you basically rinse and repeat. And the old metaphor for, metaphor for this is, of course, the oak tree, where you take some acorns from the oak tree, you plant a new oak tree, those new oak trees produce more oak trees, and you end up with more and more acorns. And you reach the point where you're no longer having to live off of eating acorns, uh, proverbially speaking, but you're actually able to reinvest those acorns by planting more trees. And this is how uh, money works if it's diverted toward assets which appreciate. At stage three, you have enough investment income, either from rental properties, dividend stocks, bonds, uh, other, other businesses like this, if, where your investment income is equal to your salary. At this point, you could actually quit your job and just live off of your investment income. I'm not really accounting for inflation here, but this is a rough approximation. Then the next stage is really where your investment income begins to exceed your salary or your wages. Now, at this point, not only can you quit your job and stop selling your time for money, but you also have excess cash flow that you can use to acquire even more rental properties, more stocks, more Bitcoin, whatever it is. Your acorns at this point are producing more and more acorns. So this is really the key. You want to always use incoming money and you want to maximize incoming money by cutting your expenses as much as you can, especially when you're young and uh, you can uh, afford to live comfortably on less. You're a little more flexible. Maybe you're just coming out of college. You're used to having a roommate. Um, so use your incoming money uh, after taxes, after expenses to buy cash generating assets, bonds, stocks, rental properties, or appreciating assets, growth stocks, Bitcoin, etc. Some of these assets like rental properties, they have a tendency to appreciate in price. At the same time, you're getting paid a, a stream of cash. So that's one nice thing about real estate. The mistake that a lot of people use is they use their disposable income, their extra, extra money after paying for their basic expenses, to buy depreciating assets for social signaling. Now, this might not always be the worst thing, but the problem is these tend to be depreciating assets. 
So they might get you a good, a good looking girlfriend or wife or good looking boyfriend or husband driving a fancy car, but it's not going to make you richer. A lot of people also waste their disposable income on consumer purchases, junk, gadgets that they don't really need. It's really your choice and uh, no one's going to judge you if you decide to live a more consumerist lifestyle, if that makes you happy. happy. But if you want to accumulate wealth, you definitely need to uh, start buying assets that will appreciate in value and that will kick off cash flow. And this is really this is really a personal choice, whether you're making $50,000 a year or $5 million a year. When you look at some really wealthy people, you look at Kanye West, for example, who's currently worth about uh, $6.6 billion. If you uh, look at their current sources of income, right now, uh, Kanye is earning approximately, according to this article, it might be a year or so old, he's earning about $100 million a year. And the vast majority of those earnings are coming from royalties, from his music, also earnings from a couple, uh, from, from an Adidas partnership, and also his uh, Yeezy apparel uh, uh, line. And so here's an example where Kanye has reached the point, he reached this quite some time ago actually, where he no longer has to tour to, uh, to make money. He can obviously make good money touring, but he can also just sit back on his Wyoming ranch and watch the money flow in from things that he has invested in and also built. The songs that he's written and the royalty stream from, uh, from that. So this is one alternative to buying appreciating assets and cash gener generating assets is you can actually build assets. You can write songs if you're a rapper or songwriter like Kanye. You could uh, take a path that I've taken in, in recent years. You could publish some books on Amazon. This obviously takes uh, a lot of work and it takes a long period of time. I published my first book on Amazon in 2015 and my books didn't really start making any significant amount of money until 2020. So that's five years of writing book after book after book, not seeing very many, much earnings. And then all of a sudden, 2020 earnings really began to pick up. Likewise with my YouTube channel. I started in 2015, 2016. Never really started to, to kick off any cash until uh, the pandemic of last year. So these are, these are alternatives. You can build assets, you can write songs, you can publish books, you can paint paintings and sell them. You can start a YouTube channel, which is what Trader University did and also what Destructor EFX, the guy who asked this question did. Both of these, the nice thing about this is both of these require essentially zero capital upfront. It doesn't really cost you much money to write a book, especially if you self-publish on Amazon. You might have to pay a couple hundred bucks for, for a cover, a book cover, but that's about it. It's free to publish. Likewise, starting a YouTube channel doesn't really cost any money, but it is time intensive. You need to commit to writing books, making videos, and this can take years and years and years to succeed. For me, it took about five years. So there's no there's no free lunch. And for me, I was lucky this was really a project. Trader University is a project that I'm doing in my retirement. I haven't um, had a job in many, many years. Uh, but this is something that I enjoy doing and it's starting to make some money as well, which is always nice because I can use the cash flow uh, for charity and for buying more Bitcoin. There's another route, which is sort of the more frugal, thrifty, self-sufficient route that can be pursued in parallel or on its own. And that's basically where you save up enough money to buy a small uh, land holding, a small farm, a small ranch, maybe even a small house just with a garden and some chickens and some goats, and then you become self-sufficient. You try to grow everything you need to eat. You have your own source of water. You have solar panels. You don't. You stop paying your utilities, and this is another route. If you want to, if you want to be inspired about this, you can watch. There's a really old uh, TV series from the UK. Very quirky, uh, but very, uh, very British in many ways. Very funny and uh, quite cool actually called Escape to River Cottage where you have this celebrity chef who decides to leave London and set up in a cottage in Dorset and do a lot of barter and grow his own uh, livestock and vegetables. So this is not for everyone. You've got to really be willing to roll up your sleeves and work and you can, if you watch the series, you'll see how hard uh, uh, Hugh does work. But this is another, another alternative to working in a cubicle you can work on your own plot of land. And then you can use barter to get the things that you need, assuming you're producing an, an excess amount of uh, food 
uh, vegetables and livestock. Now, if you're if you're buying assets instead of building them, if you're buying rental property, stocks, etc., Bitcoin, one thing you need to consider is that you can you should only buy assets that have a high probability of going up by more than the rate of inflation every year on average. They don't have to beat inflation every year, but they should uh, most of the time beat inflation. So if you own a bond or money market fund uh, that's yielding uh, yielding 2%, but the true inflation rate's 3%, you're actually losing purchasing power over time. You're not increasing your net worth. And so rather than swimming up the river, you're being uh, you're not even swimming in place. You're actually being swept down the river. And if the true rate of inflation is much higher, as I think it is, it's definitely, I would say, in excess of 10%, depending on what sort of things you need to buy. Uh, if it's at 10%, then you're barely breaking even, even by owning the S&P 500, which has really gone up on average by about 10% a year, including dividends. So you have to be careful what you buy, and you have to uh, try to beat the rate of inflation. If you just stick your money in cash, here's a Chase savings account that play, pays 0.01%. There's no way you can increase your wealth sitting in cash when the central banks are devaluing our currency by printing more and more U.S. dollars or euros or yen or whatever your currency is. This used to be much easier to save in a risk-free manner. The three-year, the three-month T-bill, even in the mid uh, 2000s, was between two and five percent. The ten-year note, which is the ten-year Treasury, which is a government bond, uh, was above five percent for a very long period of time. Was above two and a half percent for a long period of time, and now is a, is just at one point three five percent. It's actually below the rate of inflation, which is certainly two percent or higher. And so there's no longer, uh, in many ways, previous generations had it a little bit easier. Uh, PEs were lower. Uh, the, the price of housing was lower relative to incomes. So this is more difficult to do these days. And uh, this is one reason I recommend sticking to stocks, real estate, and, uh, and Bitcoin. Bitcoin's gone up by uh, approximately 200% per year on average. So whatever inflation does, you're handily beating it with Bitcoin. And if you're bullish on Bitcoin, as I am, uh, something like $47,000 today, uh, which is what one Bitcoin costs today, is going to become millions of dollars per Bitcoin. So this is another way of accumulating wealth. And it's not easy. You have to be patient. You have to be patient. You have to weather volatility in order to do this. Uh, but I think this is one of the best ways of building wealth right now. You spend less than you earn, and you put as much money into Bitcoin as you can. You dollar cost average. Again, something might happen to Bitcoin. I could be wrong. So do your own research. You can watch all my YouTube videos on Bitcoin and make up your own decision. Obviously, nothing in this video is investment advice. I'm just giving you, uh, giving you my thoughts. So here's the summary. There's no, there's no quick way to get rich. If get rich quick schemes, almost never work in 99.99% of the situations. And so if you're, if you're pursuing get rich quick schemes, you're really wasting, uh, wasting precious time. And it's unlikely that you will get rich that way. Making a lot of money, acquiring wealth, always requires putting in a lot of time and work. There's no free lunch in the universe. Energy needs to be expended. This is just why Bitcoin runs on proof of work, because Bitcoin is anchored in reality. You need to expend energy to provide security and to get rich. You could. Uh, some people think joining a Silicon Valley startup or an Austin startup or any kind of startup is a way of getting rich quick. And it is in a sense, but what you're actually doing is you're compressing the amount of time it takes to make the money, but you're still putting in probably a lot of work. And so you might be able to get quite rich working for a startup, especially if you're a founder or early employee, but you're really going to need to put in, probably call it 10 to 15 years of normal work, what kind of an average person would do on the job. You're going to have to compress that into one, two, five years. And so you might get rich, quote unquote, quick, quickly, but you'll be putting in a huge amount of effort and expending a huge amount of energy and time over that period. Maybe you'll get super lucky. You'll be in something like YouTube, which just started very quickly and got sold to Google very quickly. But that really is the exception rather than the rule. The more, uh, the more tried and true path really is spending less than you earn, investing that difference in cash generating assets and appreciating assets 
or appreciating cash generating assets is the best thing. At some point, we'll be able to earn some interest on our Bitcoin in a safe manner where you control your own keys. And uh, this will be one way that Bitcoin becomes an appreciating asset and a cash generating asset. So spend less than you earn, invest the difference in assets. You could also start a side gig as we've talked about publishing books, doing a YouTube channel, uh, writing songs, uh, painting paintings. You could also uh, do like a weekend job or a side gig. This could be as simple as mowing people's lawns, running errands for people, uh, doing a pet sitting service, something like this. And in this side job, assuming that your, your primary job is not all time consuming, during the side gig that you do on in evenings or on weekends, you could take 100% of your post-tax earnings and use these to go in, to put into stocks, into real estate, into Bitcoin, into a trading account, maybe where you trade momentum stocks. So this is another way of doing it. I'd be remiss and I wouldn't be a capitalist if I, at this point I didn't mention my own courses, uh, which had become sort of the, uh, the main gig for me at this point. Uh, real estate investing made easy. In this course, I talk a lot about actual houses that I bought in the past, how I used to invest in real estate in California, what I look for in single family housing, best time of year to buy real estate, understanding cap rates, rental yields, how to find a good property management company. All of these things I discuss in this course. If you want to go the trading account route, a really nice way to to uh, to multiply your money fairly quickly. It's it's high risk but high reward is trading momentum stocks using options. And I do talk about it in this course, swing trading with options, as well as there's a separate section where I talk about my favorite long-term investments in addition to Bitcoin. I have a, uh, a SPAC is long-term investment number one, a commodity that's an excellent hedge against uh, inflation and that should do well even if the commodity price doesn't go up because it's structured. this trade is structured in a special way as well as an options play on Bitcoin. And I'll be adding new long-term investments to this list. These are actual investments that I'm making with my own money as well. If you join Trader University Premium, you get access to all of those courses, that section on my long-term investments, as well as these courses, uh, learn to trade stocks like a pro, learn to day trade like a pro, uh, momentum stock secrets, as well as all of these other courses, including swing trading with options, which we talked about, uh, how to trade futures, like a pro, uh, real estate investing, which we spoke about as well. If this is something that interests you, uh, you can click on the link in the description notes below. It'll take you to this page. You'll be able to browse. You can click on any of these boxes and see the full list of lectures. Then if this is something that interests you, you can scroll all the way to the bottom here. Click get it now, and this will take you to the checkout page. Now, normally access to everything on Trader University Premium, and when you join, you get access to absolutely everything behind the paywall. Normally access is just $125 for 30 days, but I want to give you a special coupon code since you've listened to the video for this long. If you just click down there where it says have a coupon code and type in YT, as in YouTube, 99, click update. That'll take $26 off the 30-day price. So you'll get access to everything for 30 days for just $99. You can watch all the videos. You can write down my long-term investments. You can cancel before your 30-day renewal date, or you can stay subscribed. And I'm constantly adding new investments, new lectures, and new ways of making money in the stock market, the options market, the futures market, real estate, using Bitcoin, etc. If you have something you'd like to see added to the site as well as a Trader Premium uh, subscriber, Trader University Premium subscriber, you can make, make a suggestion and I'll make a course or a lecture just for you. And then I'll share it with everyone who's also a subscriber. And this way I hope to make it really the best resource on the internet for investing and trading and Bitcoin. No long-term contracts or anything. So you can check it out for 30 days and cancel and not be charged again. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.